Welcome to the Ray Hanania Radio Show, brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News, the leading English-language newspaper in the Middle East at ArabNews.com. I'm Ray Hanania, your host. This season, the Ray Hanania Radio Show will focus on the U.S. presidential elections, the battle between the major party candidates, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, and the third party contenders who could push the election into the House, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Dr. Jill Stein. Who do Arabs and Muslims support in the presidential election and why? I have two guests today who will help us answer that question and talk about their polling, polls and surveys they've done and taken about the candidates. First up is John Zogby, founder of John Zogby Strategies. John founded the polling company more than four decades ago and has conducted research and polls in 80 countries around the world. His company is often cited for its accuracy and ability to identify trends in elections. John has a new book out, by the way, about elections called Beyond the Horse Race, How to Read the Polls and Why We Should. My second guest is Chris Habibi, the National Government Affairs and Advocacy Director for the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, ADC, the largest grassroots organization representing Arabs in America. ADC conducted a survey at the end of July that showed preferences that Arab and Muslim Americans have in the presidential election. This show is broadcast live every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNCK AM 690 Radio in Detroit and Michigan and rebroadcast on Monday at 5 p.m. also in Michigan. It's also available online at arabnews.com slash Ray Radio Show. We will be right back to speak with our guests, John Zogby of John Zogby Strategies and Chris Habibi, of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee right after these messages. ArabNews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at ArabNews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com, news that matters to you. Hey, Michigan, let's think beyond the sink and learn where the water your family drinks every day comes from. Private wells and public water supplies allow homes across Michigan to draw water from different sources like lakes, rivers, and groundwater. Tap into the facts about your home's water source and learn about your home's water quality to protect your family's health. Visit michigan.gov slash care for MI drinking water. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Ziad brand quality products from our family to yours Ziad brothers importing offers the finest quality products including brands like sultan craft nestle hook rigo picon dana and many more ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best for more information visit our website at www.ziad.com that's www.ziad.com Ziad quality products from our family to yours. Every Thursday in Michigan at 5 p.m., award-winning columnist and journalist Ray Hanania hosts the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network on WNZK AM 690 Radio and brought to you by Arab News Newspaper. This season's focus is on the U.S. presidential elections. Will it be Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or Dr. Jill Stein? Veteran political analysts and elected officials will join as guests. Join us every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNZK AM 690 Radio for the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network, a special on the presidential elections. Shows are rebroadcast each Monday at 5 p.m. Get to know more about the show at ArabNews.com. Welcome back to the Ray Hanania Radio Show, broadcasting on WNZK AM 690 Radio in Michigan uh, on the U.S. Arab Radio Network and also online at Facebook.com slash Arab News. We're going to focus on the elections this season during the radio show, um, and uh, we're going to be broadcasting from now 
through the election until mid-December. I want to welcome my guest, pollster John Zogby of John Zogby Strategies. John founded the company more than four decades ago and has conducted research and polls in 80 countries around the world. His company is often cited for its accuracy and ability to identify trends in elections. His website is johnzogbystrategies.com. And I understand, John, this week, um, you have a new book coming out about the elections called Beyond the Horse Race, How to Read uh, the Polls and Why We Should. So we're going to let's look at the Arab and uh, Muslim and American community in this election. John, welcome to the program. It's always good to see you. You're phenomenal. Always good person. to see you, too, Ray. You're great. So how how important, first of all, is polling in elections? Let's just kind of define what should people expect out of polling? Well, first of all, the importance part is that, you know, particularly in a democracy, ultimately the people do have a say. And to some degree anyway, after you take away those who are locked in, Republican, locked in, Democrat, there's a fungibility there in the middle. And uh, it's kind of like, Ray, if I need to lose weight, which ha I happen to have to, um, you and me both. November 5th. I'm not going to get on the scale November 4th and say, oh, geez, I blew it again. I'm going to be tracking as I go along just to get some sort of a sense as to how I'm doing and what I need to do. It's the same thing with polls. I think there's a lot of curiosity there. Frankly, those who bash the polls the most are the ones that know every number. Um, but I have found, in the, as you pointed out, in the 40 years of doing this, that even the folks who should know better, really do not focus on the right things when they look at polls. And then they act surprised or disappointed when in reality, uh, the, the truth has been out there right along. Yeah. And that's interesting you say that because I think that's important. Uh, you're losing weight. And let's, you, you know, you go on a weight loss plan. I lose weight. I gain weight. I lose weight. I gain weight. Some people look at polling and say, oh, the poll said Hillary Clinton was going to win and she lost. The pollsters, you can't trust them. But the reality is, I think what you're saying, too, is you're following a trend and these things change day by yes. day, week by week, month by month, the issues that surface. So a poll today and maybe the polling says someone is going to do well, that could easily change by election time, right? It certainly can. And I think what we need to strip away from our minds is that the poll says someone's going to win. All the poll does is say somebody's ahead. Right. Somebody's behind. They're tied. And that's that snapshot in a moment. But you're so right about the trend line, Ray, because I want to go back to 2016, and I'm a free agent because I didn't poll that election year. We were sort of in transition as a company. But I watched my colleagues. And so on a national level, things, you know, headed down to a Hillary Clinton lead of about 2.5%. And most of the polls were right there. Uh, caveat, a Democrat, the way that our popular vote is skewed because of California, New York, Illinois, big states, big blue states, Democrats should be ahead by four points uh. in order to be assured victory. So she was leading in the national poll, but by not enough. Got the it. second thing is... And this is really instructive. If you looked at the battleground states, and I'm just going to do a broad swath here, but if you looked at the battleground states and you looked 10 days before the election, Hillary was leading by 10, by 9, by 6, by 7, in the various states. And then if you followed the polls daily, as I did, the 10-point lead to 7-point lead, to five-point lead, to three-point lead. Pennsylvania, perfect example, goes into election day with a three-point lead, but she had been ahead by 10, and the downward spiral Got is it. there. Do we say then, when she loses Pennsylvania, oh, the polls didn't catch it, they had her right. ahead by three? No. And that's the same as the, the other states. It 
It didn't happen that way. The trend line was enough to make you watch. So polling is interesting, in other words, for issues, popularity of issues and trends. And I think that's what people don't understand, that if a poll is good, if you're a candidate and you could and you have a good pollster like John Zogby strategies, you're going to say, hey, the trend is going up or the trend is going down. That helps them, not you're going to win or you're going to lose. What do you see when you're looking at, uh, and I know this is kind of, and I don't know how hard this is, but when separating Arabs and Muslims from mainstream Americans, um, what do you see uh, in the upcoming election? Any trends, any issues that are really kind of lighting fires or dousing fires uh, when it comes to Trump and Harris? Gaza. Ray... You are a Palestinian American, I'm a Lebanese American, but the one thing that's in our bloodstream, even among those fifth generation kids who are named Scotty and Heather, who are still still have an eighth Arab American in them, Palestinian issue is in the bloodstream. Right. It is, um, it is a fundamental uh, injustice. It's a fundamental... Um, example of colonialism. I love it when I hear the kids on campuses saying, this is colonialism, this is genocide. I mean, this is what it is, and this is how we see it. The important thing, though, is that there are variables and there is fungibility. The variables are that, all right, um, but so I'm a 22-year-old college graduate, now I'm facing a huge student loan. Well, of course, that's important to me. Right. But Gaza's is still there. Or, you know, I, I can't afford to buy a quality piece of beef. Uh, I could, you know, two years ago, but I can't now. So there are other issues, to be sure. But the heart and soul is, is with Gaza. So there are the variables. The other is the fungibility, meaning... The Arab American vote. Well, sure, you know, I may live in upstate New York and for local reasons, um, some Lebanese and Syrian are Democrats because maybe they got a job during the Depression. Some are Republicans because their values are conservative. But there's still some core issues. And Gaza is, in fact, one of those issues. The important thing, though, fungibility is that if I go back to the 1990s, I will see, you know, the vote split Democrat versus Republican. But then, you know, when I get to uh, the Iraq war and the Patriot Act, what I see is Arabs and Muslims shifting way over Democrat. Uh, John Kerry won the Muslim vote. I'm separating that out. Right. He, he won it uh, with 75% of the vote. Bush got about 10% of that vote. Um, and then um, earlier than that, Bush, running in 2000, had identified the um, uh, uh, profiling of Arab Americans, and the votes had swung over to Bush. Now it's back to Kerry. This time around, um, Biden had actually done well among Arab Americans. I mean, not a landslide, but he had won by 10 points in 2020. But in the most recent poll we did, and to be fair, I don't have anything among Arabs and Muslims since Kamala Harris. But what I do have going back to April is almost a destruction of the Democratic brand among Arab Americans and Muslim Americans because of Gaza. And and just explain the term fungibility for listeners so they understand what that means. Uh, That it can go either way, depending on the dominant issue. Got it. Yeah, got it. And it it. is. And and, uh, I assume that uh, Gaza, do you think, and maybe, you know, in 40 years of polling, I know that I'm angry about the Republicans. I'm also angry about the Democrats. I could go to a third party, but I'm told over and over again, including by history, that third party candidates have a very difficult hurdle. As popular as some may become, 
like Ross Perot, he did impact the election, but he couldn't win. Do we see, have you seen any trends about the third party candidates like Robert F. Kennedy or Dr. Jill Stein or the others impacting this election in a way that might impact the results? Yeah, it could. Now, full disclosure, my partner and and um, managing partner, of course, at John Zogby Strategies, Jeremy, is in fact polling for Bobby Kennedy. However, if we're, yes, they can have an impact. And right now, Kennedy's having more of an impact on Trump than he is on, on Harris. Interesting. And Jill Stein is having a slight impact as she was on Biden. I don't have any really new numbers that can tell the story. And of course, she's locked in at about 1%. Kennedy is at about 8 to 10%. However, um, for those who might be inclined to go with Bobby Kennedy, you know, and to make a statement, his position on Israel and Gaza is as bad, frankly, if not worse, right. than both Biden and Trump. And so if that's the dominant issue, he had been doing fairly well among younger voters, but this is a wall here for people. Right. So it's interesting because you and I have been covering politics for 45 years, I mean, four decades, five decades. Um, I understand that when politicians get out there, they play their rhetoric to the most dominant forces. It makes sense to me that a candidate is going to play to APEC and the Israel audience. But after the elections, there's a tendency to change. Mm -hmm. In all your years of covering politics and looking at politics, is that a reality? I mean, is it fair to say to people, okay, they're, they're yelling, they're saying something that you may not like, but after the election, there's a chance it could change. Is that a truth or is that an untruth in your view? I mean, no, it is a, it is a truth. You know, I remember um, uh, 2004, John Kerry engaged in, in Saudi bashing and in pro-Israel rhetoric. Uh, and then, as you know, Senate the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and then Secretary of State, that is not how... John Kerry behaved at all. Right. He took uh, among our secretaries of state of late next to Jim Baker, I think stands uh, John Kerry, um, you know, as someone who attempted to be fair uh, and, and balanced. Um, I think you find that less so with uh, Tony Blinken. But with all of that said, there is a re geopolitical reality, which says during elections, um, don't alienate, um, you know, a very powerful lobby that donates a lot of money and is the balance in key states. Once you get elected, there's the geopolitics of the region and you can't be afforded to bash power players. Um, and, and not simply for oil, but for the reality of the politics of the, the region, right. Iran, Saudi Arabia, Sunni Shia, so on. Yeah, and, and when I talk to uh, Arabs, uh, uh, Arab Americans and Muslims, when they ask me, um, I always say, listen, there's a 70% rule, and I think Reagan defined that 70% rule when he was president, that 70% of what, I, there's no candidate that you're going to agree with more than 70%. 70% in America is a passing grade in school. You learn that yeah. from elementary school. If you're at 70, you're good. Is there ever 100%? No. Hi, but we're emotional, aren't we? I mean, it must be difficult as a pollster to poll the Arab and Muslim community because we are so emotional. We feel like we're being targeted. Um, we feel like we're being discriminated against. How accurate, how, how do you cut through that emotion to find out what the real base feeling is, you know, in an election. Can you do that? Or is that one of the factors that just swings? Oh, no, I think you can do it. I've been doing it a long time. And I think, you know, I, I mentioned this in the book. We, we poll people, not numbers. Right. And people are, individuals are a sum total of a number of, of emotions and rational thinking. But, you know, when we do focus groups, when we talk anecdotally at the at the bakery 
or the the restaurant. It like all comes it out. The, One of the, I like to call it the taboon, where you sit there and it, the it, wives would make the bread around the fire. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and and, um, and and it's honesty. You know, yeah. it comes out. Um, uh, and that's how I've learned about how much of a bloodstream issue. It's more than a political issue. You know, Palestine, Gaza. I, I think to a great degree, Lebanon. No, no matter which side you're on in Lebanon, it's something that that doesn't uh, doesn't leave you. Um, yeah. So when you look at the polling that's out there, um, how do you see uh, third party candidates impacting the major party candidates? Can they throw this and push this into the House, or is that so far extreme that it's not likely? You know, I th I think that it was likely had Biden stayed in. I think it's less likely now that Harris okay. is in. Now the caveat again is that we've got a we've got a ways to go here. You know, we got about you know a little under th three months to go, and I can not only say that anything can happen, but Ray, anything has already happened right. several times. Yeah. What's to say it's going to stop right now? Yes. I can't foresee. In fact, I'll tell you right now, I, just dodging your question for a second or postponing That's all right. it for a second. Um, uh, I don't know that Donald Trump has the juice to continue this wow. for three more months. I wow. mean, I, you're starting to see him running out of steam, uh, stale, um, disinterested, and off his game. Now, Temporary blip, you know, I don't know. But right now, he's really in the doldrums. And so anything can happen on that side, too. So if Arabs and Muslims turn toward Dr. Jill Stein, who is 100%, you know, and I and I look yeah. at Kennedy, I look at him, he just, uh, there's so many issues I would love to see him be president as to get to the bottom of the John F. Kennedy assassination. He's the only guy that I trust that can do it. He's not very good on the Middle East, in my opinion, but I think he could change the way a lot of politicians change. But can they take, I know that Harris has a, is trending upward because of the momentum, the freshness. And as you say, Trump, I, he seems a little blurry a little bit. But um, after we get past the Democratic National uh, Convention, do you see Arabs and Muslims playing a major factor in determining who will or won't win, are they still well, I do. your force? And who no, will impact do. the most? Let's start where everybody starts in Michigan. There's 110,000 Democratic voters who voted uncommitted. Right there, they've got to be persuaded. My understanding is, well, bridging is taking place through the Kamala Harris campaign and right. her public persona, the choice of Tim Walls, for example. Uh, a progressive, they're th both of them taking a completely different stand on the student protesters, right. pro-Israel, but let's listen to the student protesters. That's a signal of a bridge. Remember, we're looking Arab Americans about 5% of the total uh, vote, Muslim Americans, let's make that a grand total of um, say 7%, that's big. And in the battleground state, which Michigan is, that's huge. And that in itself is a significant number of, of electoral votes. I say the same thing about Pennsylvania as well. Not uh, as large an Arab American community, but pockets, particularly in Western, in the Western part of the state, which also happens to be a white working class part of the state. Uh, there's a progressive side of the state, mainly in the in, in the Philadelphia bailiwick. And so, yeah, right there, you've got two uh, powerful states. However, when I see results of Trump ahead by one, now these days, Harris ahead by one, um, look, that's only five, 10,000 votes. When you've got an Arab American population as little as 50,000, voters or so that looms pretty large so you think the arab and muslim vote will be a major factor in determining what happens in this election it certainly could be you know trend line right now as you point out is is harris but 
this is a honeymoon. Uh, she she had a good 10 days, two weeks of honeymoon. She's got the Democratic National Convention this week. Um, the honeymoon continues. We begin in earnest uh, on, on Labor Day. I suppose at that point, um, you know, the Trump campaign, which incidentally is much better organized than at any other time that, that he has run, you know, may straighten out its message, may tell uh, with seriousness uh, J.D. Vance to go disappear right. somewhere, milk some cows in Iowa and don't do any media seemed, except local media. He seemed like media. a bad choice. Um, if you, you know, have a vice president that's there to bring votes in, he seemed to kind of parallel Trump's vote. And I'm thinking, OK, what benefit did he bring to Trump? Um, Walsh seemed to bring some benefit, a reinforcement that she cares about certain issues. I thought that helped her. Um, and she cares about about certain people right. as well, which includes, you know, small town and rural uh, white working people and so on. You know, the choice of Vance, you know, what what brought J.D. Vance into the public domain was the hillbilly elegy, right. which is a very eloquent story. Very about, popular. And about an, uh, an America that a lot of people forget about, you right. know. What's placed him in trouble is the fact that he doesn't appear to be that J.D. Vance at right. all. Right. And inauthenticity will kill yes, a candidate. I, I think you're right. I think that when I watch the movie, I'm going, who is that J.D. Vance? It doesn't sound like the guy now right. running for vice president. And had he not gone into politics the way he has at this level, I think that the people would have looked at him and said, wow, what a great guy. Uh, listen, I know we only got a couple more minutes, but and I want to get you. What do you any predictions based on what you've seen? I mean, you don't even have to do the polling. You see Trump, you see Biden. I mean, wow, a president steps down. And for you and I, when we hear somebody say, I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty, I'm guilty. I'm not going to step down. I'm not going to step down. I'm not going to step down. They step down. It happens, right? The pressure is mm -hmm. just too much. What do you see happening in the last couple months? What what should voters be looking for? What should Arab and Muslim Americans be looking for? Um, and let me give you an example about when Harris uh, scorned the two, uh, lectured the two protesters at the University of Michigan uh, students at her Detroit rally. I thought, wow, you didn't have to be so mean to yeah. them it was more anger and then later she tried to spin it back and say no we're going to try to address that what should we be looking for as arabs and muslims in this upcoming election so number one with harris that was a sister soldier uh moment that was her telling one side um look i expressed some sympathy but you don't own me right sit down and shut up arabs and muslims keep the candidates' feet to the fire. Uh, don't back off. Don't let anybody blow smoke your way. Um, the point has been made, but the point needs to be continued, certainly through a ceasefire and uh, uh, an actual peace plan of, of some sort. So this time around, don't say, well, I agree with her on this, 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 and this. But I don't agree with her on that, so I'm going to hold my nose and vote for it. No, not this time. Do you think that Arab Americans, uh, just a final question, have are having more influence in this election than they have since your brother, Jim Zogby, in the 1980s, when they had a platform, they had such influence and power um, in a different way in defining the message. This time, it seems that uh, Arabs and Muslims actually have the card the card to decide who is going to win. Do they have that power in this election to decide? Who yes, wins? they do. I think the sun, moon, and stars are aligned. The issue is there. There's broad support on that issue, not only within our community, but among young people and progressives. 
And I can't get over the number of calls I'm getting. Where do Arab Americans stand? What do you think about Arab Americans? And I know to speak um, on behalf of my brother, who's been tireless and very oh, phenomenal, phenomenal guy. This time around is different. We hold some cards. All right. And so we're going to be a big, we'll be big players in this election. Whatever happens. Let's talk again. All right. My guest, uh, John Zogby, uh, um, he is a been a pollster for years. He has a new book coming out that I want you to look for. It'll be coming out next week called Beyond the Horse Race, How to Read the Polls and Why We Should. It'll help you understand polling. Uh, and as John explained to us today, it's not about picking who's going to win, but it tells you which way the wind is blowing, where the trends are going up or down, and what are some of the big issues. John Zogby Strategies is the uh, website if you want to look them up. John, again, it's a pleasure to talk to you always. Thank you, Ray. All right, buddy. Yeah, hey, take care. And um, yeah, let's do it again. ArabNews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at ArabNews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com, news that matters to you. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bottom serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all seat DC guidelines and is open every day 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. Life for Relief and Development has now been rated as one of the best charities for humanitarian aid. Life's humanitarian projects span the globe, and Life is celebrating its 30th anniversary of providing essential life-saving aid to people and communities in 36 countries, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. Where there is life, there is hope. And when disaster occurs here or around the world, including being one of the first responders to the Turkey-Syria earthquake crisis, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. We are looking to help the earthquake victims and we take 0% overhead on emergency donations. So please help improve these efforts. Learn more about our involvement to help the helpless and bring hope where it's needed most and make your tax-deductible donation to Life for Relief and Development now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's 248-424-7493. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. I'd like to now welcome our guest, Chris Habibi, the National Government Affairs and Advocacy Director for the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, ADC. ADC recently conducted, I think it was toward the end of July, a survey of Arab and Muslim Americans that showed their preferences that they have in the presidential election. Welcome to the program, Chris. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, Ray. Now, I wasn't surprised by the results. Dr. Jill Stein, uh, according to your results, got 45, just a little over 45% of the uh, uh, Arab and Muslims who took the survey. 
And again, it's not a poll, but a survey said they preferred Jill Stein. Kamala Harris came in second with 27.5%. Um, your poll, your survey showed that there were at least almost 18% undecided, 6% not voting, and only 2% for Trump and 1.3% for Robert F. Kennedy. When you look at those results, what do, you, what do they really tell us? I mean, in real terms, what, what's driving that? Yeah, thank you so much again. Um, I think there's just two big takeaways from, from the poll that we ran, uh, from the survey we ran July 27th and 28th. Um, one was just how deeply unpopular President Biden is within our communities across the country. Uh, and you saw that between uh, a poll, a survey that we did back in May, and then this one um, in that, uh, in the May survey, uh, I think President Biden got somewhere around 7% of the, the community. Um, whereas now uh, Vice President Harris came in with 27.5%. Uh, um, so that's the first big takeaway. Um, and then the second is just how much of a winning message being anti-genocide is for our communities across the country, including in some of the most important states come November. Because, um, you know, Dr. Joe Stein has been very clear um, and emphatic in her anti-genocide message including uh, considering Arab Americans who are vocally anti-genocide as her running mate. And what's interesting, of course, is that Biden in prior surveys was so low, obviously, because it seemed like he was trying to make everybody happy and making nobody happy, especially in our community. Um, then he decides to step down and suddenly you see this surge difference in the survey between uh, uh, Biden and Kamala Harris. Um, what do you make of that? I mean, is it is there some I mean, how do you interpret it? I I see it as like maybe the community hoping she's going to be better um, and maybe some believing she's going to be better. But was there some other factor that may have influenced that from your perspective? I, I think that part of it is is hope. There's always hope um, that a new candidate means that, you know, they'll, they'll listen, um, that the, the fact that. President Biden decided to step uh, to, to drop out of the race is an indication of the, the power of our movement. Um, I think there's a very real just threat posed by uh, some of the other candidates in the race. And, and our surveys are a reflection of people now considering the totality. Um, but I, I do think when it comes time to, to enter the ballot box that, you know, that, that, What's happening in, in Gaza, um, the, the genocide that's going on is still going to be very much top of mind. Uh, and Gaza, obviously, I think, and, and uh, from your survey, I mean, was it just who would you support or did it include other issues? So this, this survey was very specific on who do you support um, if the election were held today, who would you, who would you be voting for? Um, but to, to better understand the community's uh, policy preferences, including on international affairs. Uh, ADC is actually in the, in the middle of uh, a very detailed uh, information gathering. We have a survey out there. We have, we're hosting town halls to hear from the community and develop uh, an Arab American agenda that is for community and by community. So obviously, when you look at the survey results, the most recent ones, it's clear Gaza is the driving force. I mean, that seems to be clear because Dr. Jill Stein is the only one who's unequivocally in support of a two-state solution, unequivocally in support of a ceasefire, unequivocally in support of uh, ending the carnage by the Israeli government. I don't like to always, I, mean, I don't like to criticize the Israelis, but I like to be very specific with the Israeli government and Benjamin Netanyahu. And there seem, and if I'm interpreting what you're saying correctly, there seems to be some hope that maybe Kamala Harris, a mainstream candidate, is moving in that direction. Clearly, Trump and Kennedy are out of the ball game. Is that you think there any chance that Arab Americans might support him? Support uh, Donald Trump or, or RFK? Trump or Kennedy? Significant numbers. I th I th I I can't see that happening. Um, I, you know, not not in the prediction business, um, right? But you know, when it it comes comes down to it, it our community is is very much 
right now we're supporting Dr. Stein um, and, you know, we're hopeful. But if if the the Harris campaign, the Harris Walls campaign continues on the, the path that they're on right now, um, including what happened in, um, in Detroit at the end of last week, um, they might start to, to, to hemorrhage support just like uh, Biden did. Yeah, I, I think it's fair. And would you agree with me that uh, um, when the two students from the University of Michigan uh, chanted um, an end to cease fire at the De- Detroit rally, the two students were from the University of Michigan, Kamala Harris came across like she was being very harsh in response to them. Is that the sense that the community has about the way she responded? I know she tried to backtrack a little bit, you know, over the next couple of days, but that first impression is always very hard to change. What what impact do you think that had on the potential for Arab Americans and Muslims to shift more to her than they are currently? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think it, it not only came across as harsh, it came across as dismissive, um, yeah. which is something that, you know, we have heard for 10, 11 months now is that the, the federal government has been dismissive, ignoring our communities. Um, and so it it gave that impression. And it just means that that the Harris campaign is going to have to work even harder now to, to break break that impression. Do you think Arab and Muslim voters are much more sophisticated today than they were like 20 years ago in terms of voting? Because I think this is the first election where I've actually seen uh, Arab and Muslim voters cohesive in the sense that they have one focus in determining the election in their vote. And could they have a real impact in this election? Will they have an impact in this election? I absolutely think that we're going to have an impact in this election, um, especially since a, a lot of the the focus and understandably so is on who wins Michigan. Um, but you're also right in that, you know, we're seeing what we're seeing right now from our communities across the country is a an organizational structure that, that just wasn't there before. And, you know, that that is an outgrowth of the organization that's happened to oppose genocide and to, to call for an arms embargo. Um, but I, I'm hopeful that, that what we we've, we've built now can continue on and, and solidify our, the Arab communities across the country as a voting block worth paying attention to. And, and acknowledging that ADC isn't a political organization. You're a, uh, you know, you focus on culture, activity, the strengthening of the community, um, but would you say that uh, the abandoned Biden uh, campaign, the uncommitted Biden, the in undecide, undecided movements, there have been several of them, but they all they really came together. Do you think that that brought the community together? I mean, around the issue of Gaza and what's happening there? I think I mean, how much credit, give... how much credit, how much credit do you give those movements in terms of this seemingly uh more focused political view that the Arab and Muslims have today than they've had before. I I think it it, it absolutely played a role in in what we see right now. Um, You know, it gave our our community members something to do that wasn't just, you know, emailing and calling their member of Congress. Um, It gave them something very tangible. And that's, that's really important when we're talking about trying to get, people engaged to go vote and to just get engaged civically. And would you, and um, do you view the, uh, of course, I being a journalist, I I find myself, even though I've been in journalism for 45 years, I always find myself fighting with my own industry, my own profession. Um, It doesn't seem like the mainstream news media. I know they cover Gaza leaning far to the right towards Israel Um, and their interests. But um, it seems to me that sometimes the media doesn't really give us the credit that we deserve. I don't see any big stories in the media about the Arab American community coming together. It's almost as if they're trying to marginalize your poll, uh, the message that's very clear that we're not that big of an issue. Um, The real issue has to do with people realizing that if they don't vote for Harris, they're going to elect Trump. To me, that's a illegitimate argument. It's just not legitimate. Is uh, what type of uh, uphill fight are 
Arab and Muslim American voters in to overcome these hurdles? And and what are some of the hurdles? The media, politics, uh, do the candidates really talk about us? Are, Are we being marginalized? I mean, is Gaza being marginalized other than the fact that something happens every day? I would, I would think so. Um, and you know, the one major obstacle that we we've seen has been just the lack of of Arab voices um, on whether it's co- covering what's going on in Gaza, but also covering the uncommitted movement and you know the the hundreds of thousands of voters across the country. Um, there just hasn't been the the Arab voice on, on any of these panels that we're seeing. Um, and then what you do hear a lot, especially, you know, when they have their their horse race primary uh, election, co- election night coverage um, is exactly what you said of, you know, if you don't vote for for at the time Biden. Now, if you don't vote for Harris, it's a vote for Trump. And it's a, a lot of fear mongering and taking away the agency of Arab voters across this country. Um, you know, it's, it's not incumbent on us. To, to, to vote for either party, it's incumbent on a candidate to earn our vote. Do you think that the message is uh, clear to the uh, candidates that Arab and Muslim voters can't be taken for granted? Or do you think it's more a matter of them wanting to resist that reality that they're going to decide elections in several states, swing states, correct? Michigan, yeah. uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, those are all the uh, states that Biden barely defeated. And when I say barely, 200,000 votes isn't a lot when there's 6 million cast, like in, in Minnesota. And it was even closer in Michigan. Um, do you think we're being taken for granted by some of the politicians? Or are, do you think maybe they're just trying to push us away and hope that we don't have an impact? I, I think they, they especially at the, the, the leadership level, there is a a false belief that, you know, come November, we're going to see the light and we're going to, you know, that it's that same, you know, they're going to come down and see the difference. There's going to be Trump or Harris on the ballot and they're, they're going to make the right choice at that, that time, instead of doing any work necessary to, to properly engage with our community. Um, now, I think that one strength that we've had is that we have been very consistent that, the, the demands from the from the community, the demands for what we expect a candidate to do in order to earn our support have been consistent for 10, 11 months now. Um, and that's similar. It's an immediate and permanent ceasefire. It's an arms embargo. And, you know, it's very clear. So um, when it comes down to it, they know what they need to be doing. Uh, and it seems like at least for now, they're still hoping that come November, we're going to ignore all of that. Do we see, do you see any outreach from, I know that there's a group called Arabs for Trump. Um, I think it's uh, Tiffany uh, Trump's, Donald Trump's daughter, Tiffany's husband uh, is Arab American. I think Lebanese, his father-in-law is doing Arabs for Trump. Do, do, do they have, will the, did you see any significant movement um, on their part in terms of winning support from Arab and Muslims? in in the polling or just in the observations over the last you know several months yeah so you know i i've seen them pop up here and there um obviously we really haven't seen uh, an impact on the the polling that that adc has been doing um and i think when it comes down to it what the issues that the the community cares about are other outside of what's is number one which is you know what's going on in, in palestine um they find themselves deciding on issues like healthcare, like the, like the economy, like every other American. Um, and so each, each individual Arab American is going to make a decision on which party represents the issues that they care about most. How, how severely are we taken for granted? Because I don't hear them talking about the issues as an Arab and a Muslim. They, they absolutely need to, to be taken this seriously. The fact that the uncommitted movement and the um, the anger that our community felt towards President Biden that resulted in him no longer running for president is a is a big should should be a big wake up call not just for for the Democratic Party but but for the Republican Party as well.
I, I know some people in, in the media says, well, Biden had to step down because of his poor performance at the debate. And then the terrible follow up interview, which was softball from George Stephanopoulos um, through the next two weeks. And then he steps down. But I always felt that the numbers that the uncommitted movement, the abandoned Biden movement, they showed him that he was vulnerable in a serious way. That was a major factor in their decision for Biden to step down. Uh, I, I, I think I, I would agree with that, I, that um, the, those last two weeks, the, the debate, the Stephanopoulos interview, that definitely was maybe like the straw that broke the camel's back type of situation, but not so right. much. This is the reason. Um, they definitely, the, the, the pushback and the, the uncommitted, all of that showed that, that Biden was a weak candidate. And so, you know, it was just, they, the establishment was waiting for some sort of excuse to then to move on. Do you see any role that Arab Americans and Muslim Americans are being given at the convention? Are, are we re I know that we may have members who are delegates, but should they acknowledge us at the convention? Shouldn't they be reaching out to us saying, we need you? I think you're, you, you have it. You hit the nail on the head. They, they have not been doing that. Um, I don't anticipate them putting up a, a bunch of Arab Americans to, to speak during, during the, the convention next week. Um, and I do think that that's, that's a mistake, um, not recognizing or acknowledging our, the strength of our community is, is just, it's a losing campaign message. There seems to be this fear among many Democrats, um, a fear driven by APAC. 264 races where they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars, more than I've seen any other lobbying political action committees invest in elections. It's almost like a threat. And it seems like before this election it, that it's going to be very unlikely that Democrats are going to want to, you know, engage the wrath of APEC and the pro-Israel lobby. Is that a threat? Do you think that that might be one reason why Democrats seem muffled in how they address these issues? Is it a fear of being beaten like we saw Cory Bush and Jamal Bowman, two great spokespeople for justice and freedom and the rule of law taken out of office specifically because they stood up for those two issues? I see that. I, I, but I also would point to, where, to, uh, to Representative Summer Lee out of uh, Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh area. And then um, Rashida, Representative Rashida Tlaib, she they couldn't even get somebody to run against her. Um, so, yeah, they, they're, the, the loss of, of, of Corey Bush and, and Jamal Bowman um, will be felt. Um, but I, I like to say ADCs in, the, in the, the people business, we're in the business of empowering our communities so that they can turn out and vote for the issues that matter to them, vote for the candidates that represent them the best. Um, and I think that when when push comes to shove, that is what what will change change elections. Um, so it's the, the uh, money in politics generally is just a problem. Um, we need to, to seriously take a look at campaign finance reform. Um, but when it comes down to the people, the, the, the people support overwhelmingly a ceasefire, overwhelmingly an arms embargo. We need to to be pushing that. Um, and, and just getting out there and voting. So uh, the a ADC has their convention uh, April 12th through the 18th, you said, correct? In uh, yeah. Michigan, September 12th to the 15th in Dearborn, Michigan, yes. 12th through the 15th. I'll be there, by the way. Um, and uh, was that done intentionally to augment the voice in a state that's critical to whoever wants to win? They need to win that state. Uh, it absolutely was. Um, you know, we, we typically have our, our convention, our national convention in, in June, um, but we decided this year it, it was so important to, to have it closer to, to the, the election and, and do it in Dearborn, Michigan, which is um, to, to some of you know, the, the heart of, of Arab America. Um, and to, to really highlight the power that we have as a community to celebrate the, the history and the culture and the, the, the traditions that we have. Um, but also to, to give everybody just a little bit more 
energy and excitement to to go out and vote um, and vote for you know the the races down ballot. Um, you know the 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 fact that that ninety nine percent of all elected offices in the in the United States are at the state and local level um, is a the clearest I think indication of the power uh, that state and local officials have over our day to day lives. Chris, any final thoughts or any other issues that I didn't bring up that you want to drive home? Uh, no, I just thank you so much for for taking this time and and for um, for giving our community a voice. All right. Thank you. My guest, Chris Habibi, the National Government Affairs and Advocacy Director for the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, ADC. Uh, They have their convention coming up September 12th through the 15th. At least I got the dates right this time. Um, And their website is adc.org. Correct. adc.org. And if you want information on that, you want to see uh, politics in action, voting, uh, and, and not politics, but uh, education of our community happened. That's the place to be in September. I'm Ray Hanania. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris, we'll talk to you again. Yeah, have a good one. Thank you so much. Arabnews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at Arabnews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. Arabnews.com, news that matters to you. Are you going to start a restaurant or grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Aboud at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Naji Aboud, 734-744-9796. With more than 30,000 successful in vitro fertilizations, IVF Michigan is now ranked as one of America's best fertility clinics according to Newsweek magazine. IVF Michigan fertility centers are the recognized leaders in high quality fertility care. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and nine other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. A founding member, American Board Certified Dr. Nicholas Shama, is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. He has performed over 20,000 successful IVF cases and it's helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. When it's time to get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at one of America's best fertility clinics, call IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio toll-free at 855-952-9600. 855-952-9600. Thank you for listening to the Ray Hanania Radio Show brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News the leading English language newspaper in the Middle East at ArabNews.com. This season, the Ray Hanania radio show focuses on the U.S. presidential elections, the battle between the major party candidates, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, and the third party contenders who could push the election into the House, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Dr. Jill Stein. We'll be back next Thursday with more special guests to help us understand the role Arab and Muslim voters in America are playing in the presidential election. Check out our page at arabnews.com slash ray radio show for all of the programs that we've recorded and all of the story links that have been written about the program and also you can go to my website at hananiya.com h-a-n-a-n-i-a hananiya.com for my columns my radio shows, my podcasts, and all my writing at Arab News. Have a great week, everybody. See you next Thursday. Good evening.